Hi guys, it's your boy Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome back to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Now, I hear that you guys like mechanical keyboards. That's, that's a feeling I get, and it's been a little while since we've done a mechanical keyboard review here on the channel, so it's time to set that right. Today, we're looking at a new keyboard from Velocifier, and if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because a few months back we looked at a small 60% wireless mechanical keyboard from Velocifier. It was the K61WS, and I liked it quite a bit. I thought it was a very solid, no frills, budget. 60% uh, mechanical keyboard. Uh, today we're looking at something a little bit bigger. Today we're looking at the TKL02WS wireless 10 keyless mechanical board from Velocifier. And this is kind of like the bigger brother of the K61WS. And as much as I liked that little 60% board, there were some things about it that I wasn't crazy about. It certainly wasn't perfect, and it looks like the TKL02WS sets out to fix some of those issues. For one, uh, it's got a fixed backlight, a white backlight, which its little brother lacks, and I always prefer a backlight on my boards. Uh, it's also a slightly larger 10 keyless design, so that means that it's uh, like a full-size board, but lacking the numpad. Uh, and so that's kind of a more functional, approachable design than 60%. Uh, so uh, I think that this is going to be a board that could be appealing to a lot of you. Uh, and like the K61WS, it's uh, aimed at the budget market. The TKL02WS is only $42.00. US, which puts it firmly within the budget segment. Now, if that is too rich for your blood, <laughs> or you're saying, Nick, that's great, but maybe you can sweeten the pot a little. Well, lucky for you, we have uh, a coupon code, a discount code for 10% off Velocifier's TKL02WS. That coupon code will appear here. <laughs> Uh, it's also uh, going to be down in the video description, and I'll pin it in a top-level comment as well. That coupon code is good on Amazon, and you can check out this board on Amazon using the link provided down in the video description. So, uh, with that discount code, 10% off, it brings the price down to about 38 bucks. And I don't want to spoil the video here for you, but at $38... Uh, the TKL02WS, that's that's a steal. That's pretty darn good. Uh, so, anyway, without further ado or further spoilers, let's take a closer look at Velocifier's TKL02WS 10 keyless wireless mechanical keyboard. And here we have Velocifier's tkl 2 ws Wireless Mechanical Keyboard in box. And as you can see, it is a very plain box indeed. We have the Velocifier logo on the top left corner here. A brief description and the model number and that is about it isn't it uh it's got slightly more on it than the box for the uh, k61 ws which if memory serves was completely blank it had nothing on it but uh this is still about as minimal as it gets Got a little bit mashed in transit, the bottom corner here. Hopefully that's not a problem. A 
Nothing there. Nothing there. What a surprise, nothing there. And certainly nothing here, except a tab, which we'll remove in just a moment. And... Ah, we have some writing on the back, <laughs> just a little bit. Philosophire Wireless Mechanical Keyboard. And their website, some certifications, and made in China. So that's all it tells us. It doesn't tell us anything really about the specs of the board inside, but when you're ordering stuff online, I guess it's less important to have that sort of information on the box. I, I used to really like to have boxes with, you know, plenty of info on them, but I, I guess I'm, I'm realizing it, it really doesn't make that much of a difference, does it? I don't know. I just think it's nice when I... When a product is presented nicely, so that you know what you're getting in the box, uh, and you can sort of feel good about your purchase. It's just packaging, but anyway. Uh, so pretty plain Jane, but uh, I mean, it gets the job done. Whatever. It's a cardboard box. What really matters, though, is what's inside. So let's. Side of the box carries on the fairly Spartan aesthetic. We've got some packing foam, which has uh, no doubt served its purpose by protecting the board from getting mashed down in the corner here. And then we have a keyboard within a sort of foamy bag, which is something we've seen pretty frequently on a number of different keyboards, isn't it? It's just a common way to package it. But uh, I do believe that it's probably done its job quite well, and I do believe this board is probably well protected in transit. So let's pull it out here. You can hear those Aotemu brown switches. Oof, this thing's hefty. That's heavy. That is a dense keyboard. Put that aside for a second. So, in the box, we have assorted items. We've got a USB cable. Looks like it's got a black PVC coating. Nothing out of the ordinary. USB A on one end. Ah, USB Type C on the other. I'm actually quite happy to see more keyboards, even in the budget uh, budget range including USB Type-C connectors. It's just a nicer connector. It's reversible, right? So there's that. Here we have a little baggie in which we have the customary keycap puller <laughs> and the USB dongle. This board uses 2.4 gigahertz wireless, uh, and so it's not going to work with your Bluetooth devices, unfortunately, and you do need a USB port to plug in that, that little receiver. This really doesn't want to focus today. There we go. It's a small, small receiver. 
and looks to be identical to the one that came with the K61WS. A quick start guide, which we will take a look at momentarily. And that is it. Nothing else in there. Okay, so before we take a look at the board itself, let's quickly pop open the quick start guide here. It has the model on the front. Here's a picture of the layout. It is a very simple, uh, completely standard 10 keyless layout by the looks of it, which is great because that means keycap compatibility will be excellent. Means that you should be able to put pretty much any set of caps on here. So if the stock caps aren't doing it for you, you can put on something more fun. Product overview, 2.4 gigahertz unifying receiver, they call it. Which makes me think that I can probably use this receiver interchangeably with the K61WS and vice versa. I hope so. That would be nice. Wireless range of 26 feet or 8 meters, which is pretty typical. Supports Windows all the way from 2000 through to 10. Linux uh, as well. Uh, no Mac OS on here. So I might be out of luck on a Mac. On off switch, 1850 milliamp hour rechargeable lithium ion battery, which should provide quite, well, it says right here, actually, it says about 12 hours of uh, use with the backlight on and about 90 with the backlight off between charges. And it's about 12 hours, no, sorry, eight to 10 hours to a full charge. This thing, of course, just charges via USB with this cable that we saw here. And uh, so that shouldn't be too difficult to keep it topped up. Backlight switch. Press function up and function down to switch backlight on or off. So that's pretty minimal. There's uh, not much going on there. Not even brightness options, I don't think. Or if there is, it doesn't talk about them. We'll take a closer look in a second, but it sounds like it's either on or off. And a thousand hertz polling rate, that's actually worth noting, uh, because uh, that's going to influence, of course, the response time. So a thousand hertz polling rate on a wireless device is great. That means it's probably uh, usable for gaming without any noticeable input lag. Switches. Outtemu Brown switches, says right here. Keycaps, ABS, double shot, as you would hope. Which is great to see that that's what they are. Cable length is a meter and a half. Yeah, I was right, it is heavier. It's almost a kilogram. 2.2 <laughs> pounds. That is a pretty hefty keyboard. It felt quite dense. And then, of course, we have the customary function key combinations with the F keys for uh, the media controls and things like that. No surprises there. Control escape or function escape control. There's a factory reset. Windows lock as usual. What is this? Control function control G. Switch to full key without pounce. Do you guys know what a pounch is? I don't know what a pounch is. Function control G. Switch to full key without pounch. <laughs> I. That is, is perplexing. I do not know what a pounch is. 
uh, function control and switch to 16 keys in wired mode. What the heck does that mean? Does that mean that there's like a secondary function layer maybe? It doesn't look like it. None of the keys have secondary legends aside from the F keys, but those are just the media keys. What the heck does that mean? Hmm. I'll just have to try it out. I'll have to find out. Maybe it explains it. Doesn't look like it. Oh, but it does. I didn't realize. It says here, macro recording. You can use the Q, W, or E keys to store macros, which you can record. The content of macro recording shows the same speed as the input. So I imagine it will record your key presses, and then uh, you hit one of those keys and it will play them back. That's handy, potentially. That's actually really great to have uh, three macro function keys built in. Uh, although I don't know how many keystrokes that uses or that can hold. It doesn't say... Nope, doesn't say. No, well. Charging. Please use 5 volt 1 amp charger if needed. Otherwise, USB on your computer. A red light on the space bar will be lit when charging and off when charged. Okay, it's good to know. When you charge the keyboard through USB on your computer, the default mode will be switched to wired mode automatically, even if you have the receiver plugged into a port. So this is one of the my things that I'm happiest to see on this board is that it has both a wired and a wireless mode. So if you run out of batteries in wireless mode, or if you happen to lose your USB receiver, you can still plug it in with the included USB cable and use it perfectly happily as a wired keyboard. And that is awesome because that is something that the K61WS was missing. So I'm very glad to see the Velocifier included that on this board. Battery saving mode. Under wireless connecting mode, the backlight will be off automatically if no typing action is processed more than one minute. <laughs> yeah, the English is not the best, but that's often how it is. Any key can be used to wake up the backlight when you are back. So it sounds like it has a one minute timeout on the backlight in wireless, and that's a battery saving feature, of course. And that's, uh, that's that. That's everything. Okay. Let's take a look at the main event. Alrighty. And here we have Velocifier's K61, no, not the K61, the TKL02WS, uh, in all its black minimalistic glory, uh, is a very hefty board, my goodness, I know I said it before, but uh, it's very, very solid feeling, quite dense. And first impressions are pretty good. Uh, it's quite plain, isn't it? There's really not a lot to see. Uh, it's a blackboard. <laughs> it's got uh, a nice font choice for the legends. It's pretty standard in that respect, but it's not gamery, which I appreciate. Uh, the actual layout, as I mentioned earlier, is completely standard, so no surprises there. It's got a couple of lock indicator lights up there, and uh, a fairly slim bezel all the way around. Uh, the only thing that stands out really is this Velocifier logo, which is actually kind of ugly. <laughs> no offense, Velocifier. Uh, it's just not my aesthetic. Um, 
and it stands out kind of like a sore thumb, doesn't it? The rest of it's this very muted black, matte black aesthetic. And then we've got this big, nasty Velocifier logo. The gamery font and the burning O. Uh, but you know what? It's a decal. And I bet if you wanted, you could probably use some isopropyl alcohol or something to get it off of there without damaging the, the ABS underneath the plastic. Bet you you could, if you wanted. I'm not not suggesting you deface their product, <laughs> but if you were not a fan of the logo, you could probably deal with that pretty easily. Okay, let's take a little product tour here. So we'll talk about the keycaps in a second, but first of all, uh, the material, it's, um, it's ABS, it's textured, kind of matte texture, it's actually a bit, um, it almost feels a bit softer than I'm used to, um, somehow. I, I like it though, it's a nice, it's a nice feel, it looks good, it doesn't seem to pick up fingerprints too badly either, and it's very much the same finish on the keycaps themselves, actually. So we've got nothing along that margin. Uh, the keyboard has a slight incline to it, so it's got a bit of a wedge shape. Uh, and we've got different profiles of keys in each row, as you'd expect. On the back here, we've got nothing except for that USB Type-C connector right there. On the K61WS, it actually had two connectors. It had one over here, and one over here. Uh, not the case on this one, just a single connector. That's fine though, it's centered. You can actually see in the right light, you can see some like mold lines or something going on here. There, and there. Not so bad, and also, honestly, uh, in person, they don't really show up. But in this lighting on the camera, they do. And then, similar situation over there. Uh, worth noting, I just realized, this is a... Uh, it's not like a floating key design, as is so popular with many boards these days. It's... the keys are actually recessed down into their... their own little wells for each block, or each key. Which is kind of interesting. On one hand, that means that the backlight's not going to bleed out around the keys. On the other hand, it probably means it's a bit harder to clean it because, uh, you know, stuff's going to kind of collect in those wells. You'll have to pull out all the, pull off all the caps, I guess, to get in there. Move around the back, we have just about what we'd expect to see. Rubber feet on the bottom, rubber feet at the top. We've got flip out riser feet, which also have rubberized ends, which is nice. So that gives you a little extra angle if you want it. I generally do not, but I always like to see that included for people who do. We've got some certifications and some sort of uh, model number and that kind of stuff. Made in China, mechanical keyboard, Velocifier, all that. And one of my favorite features that Velocifier includes, a little hardware on-off switch, uh, which great for when you're using it wirelessly and if you want to swap in another keyboard or you just don't want it on for some reason conserve battery you can manually turn it on and off i wish more wireless boards had that k61 ws did but my am pro for instance does not have a hardware switch on off switch uh, and i wish it did all right so, uh, overall, 
impressions uh, after a little tour around. Uh, it looks good. It looks plain, but I think it looks pretty handsome. You see the corners are rounded off, as are uh, these edges. It's kind of got this slightly rounded off aesthetic going on on all angles, uh, which is nice. No harsh edges. We've got like kind of a stepped bevel here on the bottom, but overall uh, quite aesthetically pleasing with the exception of that Velocifier logo, but like I said, there's probably ways to deal with that if you want. So, let's take a peek at these keycaps, and I'm going to attempt to use Velocifier's keycap puller here. There's that little dongle, if you're curious. Receiver. I know they prefer the word receiver. I like the word dongle because it's fun. <laughs> no branding on it, nothing. Just a little USB receiver. Uh, and the keycap puller is pretty typical, pretty standard. Not like the wire type, that's my favorite type, but it'll probably get the job done. Let's find out. Let's. So, the caps, as you can see, are textured ABS. They're actually quite textured. There's more texture going on here than uh, I'm used to on an ABS cap. They're standard uh, OEM profile, nothing weird going on there. And they're double shot. You can see the white plastic on the back. black on the front, and then all the markings, all the legends are made of plastic, so they will never wear. They're not decals, they're not laser etched or anything, they are um, fused, fused plastic, that's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, they'll never wear out. And uh, these are actually decently thick caps. Oftentimes on these cheaper boards you find them saving you know, some cost, cutting some corners by putting on thinner, chintzier caps, even if they are double shot. Uh, but these ones are nice and thick. I like that quite a bit, actually. Feels nice. Feels a bit more textured, like I said, than I would expect. It's a little closer to a PBT texture. So that's good. Now let's take a look. I'm going to take a peek here. You might not be able to see while I'm looking, but I think these are, like I said, Otemu branded switches. Yeah, so I can see it. You may not be able to. This is always the case with the lighting, but there, maybe you can see now. That's the Otemu branding, branding, Otemu branding on the housing and the brown stem that we would expect from an Otemu brown switch. Uh, Atemu Browns are uh, fine. They are totally serviceable tactile switches. They are very much like the older style Cherry MX Browns. So if you're used to those, if you were using Cherry MX Browns before a couple of years ago, then uh, you know exactly what to expect here. They're a wee bit scratchy. They're not as smooth as other switches I've used. And the tactile bump is pretty soft. But, uh, not here, here well. A wee bit of pinging. But not too bad at all. So, that's the switch situation. The, the switchuation, if you will. Uh, and in terms of key stability, So, the space bar is not super well stabilized. It's okay, but it definitely has some play to it. You can hear it. You can see it. Uh, 
I suspect it's got just regular cherry style stabilizers under there, but uh, not as solid as some. As a matter of fact, the uh, K61WS, which I keep referring to, but the, the little brother of this board from Velocifier, I really liked the uh, space bar on that board. It was very precise. It had very little play. But this one, unfortunately, has a bit more play. The other keys, not too bad. Just about the amount of wiggle you'd expect. Fleet key or backspace, pretty good. Here, let's see if we can pull off a, just a couple more here. Maybe take a peek at those stabilizers. Stabilizers are black, as one might expect. There's another brown switch. The housings on these switches, of course, are clear because uh, it looks to me like, yeah, the SMDs or the LEDs are SMD LEDs there, mounted on the PCB underneath the switch. So the housing has to be clear to allow the light to shine through. Uh, but the switches themselves are mounted on a uh, plastic plate. And really, this, this whole thing, I will say, it is very plastic. I don't think there's any metal uh, in here, aside from, you know, the circuits and traces and stuff. But uh, the, the construction of it is plasticky. And, like I said, it feels a little bit softer somehow than what I'm used to. I don't know but uh, not in a bad way. Like it feels quite resistant to fingerprints. And let's do a quick flex test here. Let's just see. <sighs> yeah, no, <laughs> there's no flexing whatsoever. This is a very firm board as I expected it to be. Again, it's, it's almost two kilos. It's heavy, or it's almost one kilo, sorry. 2.2 pounds, but it's hefty. Um, but uh, it feels good. It feels very, very solid. So that is the situation with this board. I think it looks pretty nice. A very uh, understated, reserved look. No gamery fonts or uh, gaudy um, embellishments or anything like that. The logo notwithstanding. Um, but I think it looks good. It's a nice compact design. The standardized layout is great because it means, like I said, uh, fantastic keycap compatibility. Uh, and the materials used all feel really good. Uh, only other thing I'm going to point out, as you can see, uh, the secondary legends for like the media functions on the F keys, uh, those are decals. I can see they've got a little bit of height to them there. They're just decals. If you use them a lot, I guess they might wear out over time, but everything else is stumble shot. These two, brightness up, down, are decals. Um, but that's very standard, almost always the case. So, all right. Well, now that we've had a chance to uh, get to know this guy up close and personal, uh, it's time to take it for a typing test. Uh, I'm not going to play around with the backlight for you because it's just on or off. Um, so there's nothing really to talk about there. But uh, you will see it on in the typing test video or typing test segment, which is to follow. And you'll get a chance to hear those Otemu Brown switches in action. Uh, and then after that, we will reconvene and... Uh, We'll talk about the typing experience, the usage experience, and then we will summarize the pros and cons of this board. Let's go type.
Okay, so now that we've had a chance to take a detailed look at the TKL 2 ws and I've had a chance to use it for the better part of a month. <laughs> I know, right? The magic of editing. It's been a month. Uh, what do I think about it uh, from a typing experience standpoint? Well, uh, this board, as we've mentioned, uses Otemu Brown switches, which are very much a known quantity. They're consistent performers, uh, and they're good. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, they are a little bit scratchy and a little bit mushy compared to some other switches that you might find. Uh, they're very much in line with older Cherry MX Browns, that, that level of scratchy. Uh, and they're not going to be as smooth as your Gatorons, for instance, or as smooth as modern Cherry MX Browns. And the tactile bump isn't quite as pronounced or as precise as it is on some other tactile switches like Zelios or anything like that. But by and large, they get the job done. They give you what you expect out of a brown switch. And I've been perfectly happy typing on it for the past month for pretty much everything. Uh, so nothing to complain about. All the switches work. Uh, all the actuation force feels quite consistent across the board. Uh, really nothing to complain about. The backlight is nice as well. It's not too bright, uh, even at its maximum setting, but it's sufficient to illuminate the board to exactly what I want it to. So, uh, in that sense, it's been fantastic. Just one, one thing, really, that I would raise, and that is with the wireless for this board. Uh, I find that it's quite functional most of the time. The range is quite good, uh, at least what they advertise, which is, I think, about 30 feet, maybe 26. Anyway, uh, it's at least that, maybe even a little bit more, uh, but you're never going to be using it at that distance anyway. Uh, so functionally, the wireless is fine. The one issue I have is that occasionally the board has trouble waking up, uh, so it kind of goes into a, a low power mode where the light backlight turns off and I guess it disconnects or something, uh, probably to conserve battery power when it's in wireless mode and not being used. You press a button, the light comes back on, it reconnects the receiver and off you go. Uh, I'd say 9 times out of 10 that works just fine, but maybe 10% of the time uh, it doesn't reconnect immediately, so there's a little bit of lag between when I uh, start typing and when things start appearing, or uh, in a few select situations, it either didn't reconnect at all or it got uh, stuck on an input. So like I started typing and it just gave me like a row of one letter <laughs> or something like that, uh, or I started typing and nothing would happen, in which case I would just flip it over uh, flip that handy on-off switch off and on again, uh, and it reconnected just fine. But there were a few instances where uh, the wireless didn't seem to reconnect quite properly. Uh, now, I don't have my USB dongle in direct line of sight with the board. It's down on my tower on the floor, so it's connecting through a wooden table. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Uh, but it was a little bit annoying. I thought that it was important to mention anyway that that wireless can occasionally be a little bit glitchy. But that aside, uh, by and large, the typing experience with this board was uh, pleasant. It was quite pleasant. And with all of that discussion out of the way, it's time to summarize the pros and the cons of this mechanical keyboard, starting with the pros. The first thing that I noticed about this board is that it's really solid. It feels like it's built really well, and it feels dense and heavy. That's partly probably to do with the fact that there's a big old battery in there, but it's very much the same feeling I got from Velocifier's other board I checked out, the K61WS. I like the choice of plastics, uh, and even though it is plastic construction, it's not metal or anything like that, it just feels very solid. It just feels very well made. So that's a definite plus. Second thing I really like about this board is it's got a great standard layout, which is fantastic because it means that it's got good 
keycap compatibility. So if you want to dress it up a little bit with some exciting keycaps, you should be able to do that with pretty much any set of caps. But you may not have to because the third thing I really like about this board is, hey, the caps. <laughs> they're great caps. They're double shot ABS, uh, so they're never going to wear out on you. The only part that isn't is uh, the secondary legends up along the F row keys, like for the play, pause, and stuff. Those are just little white decals. They're probably prone to wearing over the years, but the main legends on all the caps, they're going to last you forever. Now, ABS has a tendency to sometimes shine up a little bit with use, start to feel a little smooth or tacky under the fingers. I didn't find that to be the case with these caps at all. They are very pleasantly uh, textured, and they didn't shine up over the month or so that I used them. They felt a little bit more PBT-like, actually. So I think this uh, board, for a budget board, has a great set of caps. The fourth thing that I really like about this board, and maybe this is my favorite thing of all, is that it has both a wired and wireless modes. Can't stress enough how much I'm pleased to see that. The K61WS, the 60% board, had just the wireless mode. You could plug it in via USB, but it was a charging only mode. Wouldn't transmit data. So if you didn't have your wireless dongle uh, because you lost it or whatever, uh, you were out of luck. You couldn't use the board. Uh, this board, however, works in both a dedicated wireless mode without the dongle at all and in the wireless mode with the dongle. So, so glad to see that. That means that even if you were to lose your USB dongle, you'd still be able to use this as a wired board. Or if you wanted to take it with you and you forgot your dongle, you could still just plug it in. So, so glad to see that. Fifth thing that I'm glad to see is that on-off switch. I commented about it on the little 60% board review. Happy to see it in this one as well. The only wireless boards that I've tested that I've actually seen a dedicated on-off switch, which is just, it's kind of a no-brainer, but I'm glad it's there. Something else that I liked a lot that really surprised me was the macro recording functionality. Uh, I didn't expect to see that on a budget board at this price point, and it's all built into the hardware of the board, so it doesn't require messing around with any software, and you don't have to install anything. Granted, there's only three keys that function as macro-enabled keys, but uh, nonetheless, it's great to see. I did test it out, and it works up to 32 keystrokes, it appears. Uh, simple, easy to use, functional, fantastic to see. The last thing that I really wanted to mention in the pros is the price, of course. This is a budget board. Uh, but it doesn't feel like a budget board. It's priced like a budget board. Uh, I think $42 is an excellent price for this board. You get a whole lot of bang for your buck, a lot of functionality, a very solid board at this price point. Of course, all is not perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect product, at least not that I have seen yet. This one's pretty close, but there are a couple of cons that I have to mention about this board. The first uh, is that weird wireless connectivity issue that I ran into occasionally. I mentioned it when I was talking about the, the typing experience. Again, it wasn't frequent, but when it did show up, it was kind of annoying. Not a deal breaker, because you can just turn the board off and turn it back on again, but it was just a bummer when it didn't quite wake up from its uh, low power mode properly. It didn't quite reconnect with the PC properly. So unfortunate but occasional wireless glitches. The other thing that I wanted to mention that I'm not crazy about is this the USB dongle itself. Uh, the wireless dongle uh, appears to only work with this board. They called it in the manual a unifying receiver and so I was excited thinking that I could probably use one receiver on both my TKL02 and the K61WS. They're both from the Vault Velocifier. They both use identical looking USB receivers. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Uh, this unifying receiver does not appear to be unifying. <laughs> Maybe there's something else I had to do to get it to work that way, but I could not figure it out anyway. 
uh, so the TKLO2 did not work with the K61WS receiver. K61WS receiver didn't work with the, uh, or the K61WS board didn't work with the TKLO2 receiver. It's not a deal breaker, of course. Uh, it's just kind of annoying. And if you were to lose the dongle for your board, I don't know if you could easily get a replacement. You'd probably have to contact the loss of fire about sending one. Uh, fortunately, the saving grace with this board is that it has both that wired and wireless mode. So if you did lose that board specific USB dongle, uh, you could still use the board in wired mode. So that does mitigate the negative impact of the USB receiver, but I just wanted to mention it, and it's too bad that the receiver didn't work with both boards. Final thing I want to say, it's not really a pro or a con, it's kind of both. It's the pro part of it is that this board is warrantied. <laughs> it's warrantied for one year by the manufacturer. The con part is that it doesn't say that anywhere. It doesn't say it in the box, doesn't say it on the box, doesn't say it on the board, doesn't even say it on uh, the Amazon page or Velocifier's own website, uh, webpage for the board. So they're not very forthcoming about the fact that it is covered by a one-year manufacturer's warranty, but I did check with my Velocifier rep, I confirmed it with them that it is warrantied. So if you do get this board, and it breaks on you. Do not hesitate to contact Velocifier support about it. I just wish that they were more forthcoming with that information. That's all. So where does that leave us? What is my final verdict on Velocifier's TKL-02 wireless 10 keyless mechanical keyboard? Well, if you hadn't figured it out already, uh, I like this board quite a bit. I think it is uh, an excellent product at its price point. Uh, really, you can't go wrong with it. Uh, if you break down the pricing a little bit, you can you can get a mechanical 10 keyless board, bare bones, for about 25 bucks, very much like the $25 uh, board from Aki that I reviewed, the KMG9, some time ago. That's about the cheapest that you're going to get a 10 keyless mechanical board for. Uh, but that is a wired board. It has no backlight. If you want a backlight, you're looking at about another seven bucks. I think the backlit 10 keyless boards start at around 32 bucks. I think Red Dragon has one with a fixed red backlight at that price point, which means that for Velocifier's TKL 02WS, you're paying an additional $10 for the wireless capability. And that, to me, seems quite reasonable. Uh, when you consider it as a complete package at the $42 price point, there's really nothing to complain about. Uh, it's a solid board. It looks good. Uh, it performs well. It's got a Temu brown switches, that fixed white backlight. Granted, it's fixed. There's no RGB here, but at this price point, uh, what do you expect? <laughs> like, it's just not going to happen. You're not going to get RGB and wireless at the $40 price point. Uh, and the wireless on this board works pretty darn well for the most part. Those couple of little caveats and glitches that I mentioned aside. Altogether, at the $42 price point, it's an excellent, excellent value board. And if it looks appealing to you, then go for it. I have no reservations recommending Velocifier's TKL02WS board. As a matter of fact, the biggest shame of the whole thing <laughs> is that uh, it doesn't come with other switch options. You have to want brown switches. You have to be content with browns anyway. It would be nice if they offered it with clicky blues, linear reds, and the tactile browns. Unfortunately, they don't. They only have the browns for now. I should also point out that if you want to save a few bucks and wireless and backlight isn't a big deal for you, uh, for $30, you can get the wired version of this board sans backlight sounds wireless that is also available on amazon so you can go check that out speaking of pricing like i mentioned at the beginning of the video if you want to save a few bucks on this board uh go into the video description check out the coupon code for 10 percent off 
the Aki, T-K-L-O-2-W-S, on Amazon. You can apply it to your Amazon cart, save yourself four bucks, comes down to $38. At that price, this board is an absolute steal. So go check it out down in the video description. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another relaxing review. A special thanks to Velocifier for providing the review sample that we took a look at here today and for providing the 10% off coupon code that you guys can go use on Amazon. I hope that you all enjoyed this video today. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you all back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, guys.